Welcome to FOB Defense SHOT Show 2014. Hey everybody, Josh First. We're here at the uh, Mako Group at the SHOT Show with Dylan and Jim from Omaha Air Tactical. Uh, Jim said we had to come over and check out FOB Defense, which is uh, part of the Mako Group said that he was going to start carrying it at his store and that I needed to come check out some of the new innovative products they have. Got over here and just totally blown away. I mean, we've got something new here Joe's going to, uh, Joe's going to show off. And uh, a couple of things. Uh, this is a great idea. This is a Fox Defense run stock. It's completely compatible with what we use. The trick about this guy, 10 round magazine. The next thing that got my attention, and they just showed this to me, the Glock 17 and Glock 19 pistols, plain old Jane old, everybody wants to buy two-tone colors. Look at this. Absolutely innovative. Completely functional. Will not come off. Get great grip. Pop defenses on top of their game. Different colors, the dark earth, OD green, the training orange, and obviously, what else we got? Black. Black. Black is good. Forward grips. I don't have enough magazines on my gun. I just don't. I don't know what to do. You got one in the back? Well, this is, a, this is what we're going to call the Denver Mag. Ten rounds there, ten rounds there, and... That's my new forward grip, folks. <laughs> well, awesome. Thanks for bringing us over here, Jim. And, uh, I'm gonna step out. I, got a lot I guess of we're going to look at. talk to Dylan over here, and you're going to show us all of these new awesome accessories and tools that you have. So, yeah. Well, not all. What's, what's applicable to our industry. Applicable to their side. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. So, of course, some of our stuff isn't uh, going to be always compatible. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about rail systems. I know that a lot the of times the, rail, the rails are not going to be uh, In many compatible. cases, a lot, the industry standard has moved a little bit more towards mil sec. So yeah, rails so are compatible. If, if you have an airsoft gun that you can drop a standard AR handguard onto, then some of our rail systems, actually most of our rail systems, would work in that case. Okay. Uh, for instance, this rail system is an extended rail system for a carbine length gas system. It goes around your uh, front sight tower. Nothing has to be removed from a standard AR. Your delta ring, um, your your uh, handguard cap, front sight tower. Nothing has to be removed as a drop-on fit. Wow. So if you have an okay. airsoft that can that can take it, it'll work. Otherwise, uh, it would. You know, yeah, because I mean, I know it's a pain uh, for firearms and armors and gunsmiths to take off the the gas system. We uh -huh. still have the same problem in uh, airsoft. We still have to remove the front sight post. It's all mock, but. That sure. actually makes it really easy. And in Israel, really one of the convenient. things that the IDF really uh, really wants is accessories that can be just dropped onto their existing rifles without having to worry about cutting things off, taking, removing barrels, things like that. Um, for example, one of the products that FAB came up for the IDF with is a polymer ejection port cover with adjustable tension on the detent. Why? Because they got piles of old worn out M16s from the United States. They used them forever. Then they took them and they cut the barrels down to 13 inches, and they're still using them. And the upper receiver, because it's steel on, on aluminum, eventually wears and the ejection port cover won't stay closed. So either you scrap the upper, or you get an adjustable ejection port cover. So that uh, you know, shows a little bit of the way they think. Yeah, but uh, one, of the, one of the items that I really like is the combination of our PTK foregrip and our VTS support. And so the support is mounted on the side rail. The foregrip the, is here. It's an angled shape, so it's more. It, it fits more with the natural angle of your arm. More ergonomic, yep. yes. So in addition to wrapping your hand on the on the grip, you wrap your thumb on the on the uh, VTS support, and it locks your hand in. It gives you a lot of control on the weapon. Very comfortable. Very natural. Puts yep. it right where you need it for. You know. Has a, a door on the back. Mm -hmm for storage. Yeah, that was a feature I really I really liked because I mean, all of your uh, 
your tack lights, your lasers, such anything that runs off of maybe CR123 or AA is all up there anyway, so why would you put sure. it all in the back? I mean, it makes it much more convenient to have it up here. It makes a lot of sense. You know, you're not wasting space. Fab you're maximizing De it. Fab Defense designed the original angled foregrip. You can see it here. Mm -hmm. The potato. <laughs> yes. And that's uh, very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And it was designed to handle some of the larger lights that used to be used. And so okay. the question that we got often was, I love that grip, but nobody uses those big lights in the U.S. especially anymore. And uh, do you have one that doesn't doesn't hold the light? And so that's what they came up with. Awesome. So I was, yeah, I was really impressed. That's the first thing that caught my eye when I walked in the booth, actually. Yep. And then the stock. Yeah. The, and the stock. The also, oh, one, one thing about that stock is that you can add. Oh, this. Yes, I did see this. A monopod. And then you have, yeah, I imagine you have incremental adjustment. Yes. So it's so a you have rapid deployment, and then you can also, oh, I had it there for a minute, but yeah. So it's rapid deployment, you, you come in with the rifle, over your surface you put your, you put your reticle on your target, and you can simply reach back and deploy the monopod, and it'll come down and hit the surface at exactly the desired height. And like you said, the uh, adjustment is coarse here and fine here. Oh, wow. I mean, maybe a little bit of application to the airsoft industry, but that's just all around cool. <laughs> yep. Now, as far as uh, some of the other products, grips. Um, and we do have grips. gas pullback rifles that do you yes. accept grips. And and the four grips as well. We have several. We have several styles that use that are rubber overmolded. Okay. Now the difference between this and any other uh, rubber overmolded uh, accessories for firearms in the U.S. is that a Fab uses a different kind of rubber. Most people know that the U.S. military doesn't allow the use of rubberized grips, and the reason for that is the standard solvents are used to clean and lubricate firearms will destroy those grips. Uh, this see. is a latex-based rubber. It doesn't absorb solvents. It doesn't swell. It's not damaged by heat like other types of rubbers are. It doesn't get sticky and, swe and sweaty, and when that happens, you know when sweat builds up on the grip, then it gets wet, it gets slimy and actually slicker than a polymer grip. Right. So this rubber, it's not as sticky as, as other rubbers, but it has a good texture on the in the design of the grips, and it's not damaged by solvents. Every FN SCAR rifle that is built in Belgium ships with one of these grips on it. Wow. I did not know that. I also noticed here you had a looks like an add-on accessory for a small Picatinny mount. That's true. On the side this of the grip. this this uh, grip is called the RSG. It comes as a kit. So it comes with a long cap and a short cap, and it comes with a side rail. And it's rail. removable, so it's optional. You it's can, removable, you can keep so you can put the rail this direction or that direction, so you can use it on either side of the weapon. And if you want a, if you want a stubby type grip, you use a short cap. If you want a longer grip, you can use a long cap. So it's a pretty nice, I, I tend to tend toward the stubby grips myself, because Absolutely, I run yes. my thumb along the side of the rail. Mm -hmm like you saw with the VTS there. Um, so this is this is a configuration I would use mine or without the rail if I didn't need if I didn't need the rail. Right. And I'm big about not having things on my weapon that I don't need. Exactly. Of course for us it's like everything you can put on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that you can fit. I also noticed that uh, you guys have your own line of training knives and uh, I've seen some other ones on the market that are really rigid. I mean mm -hmm. they're still a rubber but I mean, these are actually pretty pliable, and they also have the blunted tip. So, uh, tell me about kind of what the ideology behind this was. It's just a basic training knife in uh, in Israel. All training is based on the idea that fighting that you that you train a fighting system. You don't you don't go one day and say, okay, we're going to learn how to do CQB fighting with our carbines, and the next day you say, okay, we're going to go to the pistol range and qualify with our pistols. In Israel. It's all integrated, right? It's a single, it's a single system of fighting. And so, if I'm fighting, if I'm training to fight with my carbine, I'm also training to transition to my pistol when I'm out of ammunition. I'm also training if my, if I'm, if I'm out of ammo in my carbine or I don't have my carbine, I'm fighting with my pistol, and it jams. Or I'm out of ammo on my pistol, I can't fight with my pistol anymore. Now I'm, now I'm also in, in the same, in the same time, right? I'm shooting, 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 and now. I may be moving directly from that to use it to training to use the pistol as a striking weapon. Um, I'm training 
a lot of the a lot of the scenarios like when we do our Israeli special forces training courses in the US a lot of the scenarios we do once the once the we get into the second day or so of a course is we have the students starting out sitting in a car they open the door they jump out of the car they do 10 push-ups they jump up to for safety their their firearm because they're going to go into shooting for safety their firearms staged for them by a doorway but in the meantime they jump out of the car 10 push-ups they jump up as soon as they come up a guy comes at him with a knife right and so then they have to defend themselves against the knife they put the guy on the ground as soon as he's on the ground and they get up a guy's coming at him swinging a club they defend themselves against the club put him on the ground as soon as they get up a guy's got a red gun pistol in their face they've got to disarm the guy and as soon as that's done then they run over they grab their carbine they go to the doorway they open the doorway and they start shooting targets it's all it's all integrated and and it's fast and it's hard and so if you have a hard knife right. you're more Injury. likely to hurt right. somebody and so if you have something that can bend um, you know you, you know if you got hit with a knife you don't have to, it doesn't have to hurt right exactly right? yeah and, and especially if you if you're getting crazy and you get it near an eye or something like that um, hopefully the flexibility is going to deflect it. Yeah, it's going to deflect it. Also, I guess you know, you're training. Um, like I guess some people uh, train like you fight. So mm -hmm. obviously, if you're pulling your yeah. punches or you're pulling your strikes, it's not good. So exactly. I can see how the flexibility really helps promote that. So absolutely. Awesome. Uh, what else have we got? Well, there's one other product that caught my eye. Oh yes, we actually have um, shotguns in um, some of the games we play. And this is a shot shell carrier. It is, is it? but it's also it's a Picatinny mount. Yeah, it mounts on the on the rail, and I don't see, I don't see. Oh, here we go. So we have an adapter for our buttstocks, both the uh, uh, GLR 17 buttstock. This is a standard issue buttstock for the IDF, and also for the GL shock buttstock, which is a recoil reducing buttstock. Um, we've got rails on either side, so that you can mount your uh, shot shell carrier on your rail all right and it's and it's there um, usually most of our shotgun stock systems are folding systems and so we usually recommend of course for right-handed shooter that the shell carrier be mounted on the right side that way when it's folded uh, it's still there on the side okay. of the weapon so, so your so. stocks actually fold to the Gen gen generally, our shotgun yeah. stocks will fold to the right. However, they get, they're easily convertible to fold the other direction. So our, our shotgun stocks, any of our innovative. folding, <laughs> any of our folding stocks except the glial joint stocks for the AK and VZ, can fold either direction. Wow, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for showing us some great products. You know, um, Warner FPS will definitely be carrying some of these. Jim's going to hook us up. He's now, now that he's uh, kind of partnered up with them and is going to be a dealer there in Omaha, so we'll be looking for some of this stuff in our store. So be sure to check out the Mega Group. Thanks so much, Dylan. Yep, no problem.